Hello and welcome to the Slingshot Channel, Ridley Scott Mythbusting Edition. <laughs> okay, one of my all-time favorite movie is Kingdom of Heaven, made by Ridley Scott in 2005, I believe. It is so epic and so grand. I just love it and I probably watched it 20 times and counting. One of the best scenes, actually one that made it into TV Tropes awesome list, is the scene where Odo, the German knight, gets shot with a crossbow bolt right through his neck, like through the throat and out of the back. Really, really heavy shot. And he initially falls down, but he manages to get up again and then fight like nothing has happened until he's finally stopped by more arrows punching through his upper body. So he was still able to protect the knights under Godfrey of Ibelin against that ambush that was uh, actually uh, performed by the sheriff's man. Now, Odo was a big guy for sure. In fact, the actor who played his role is called uh, Yuko Ahola, a Finnish strongman. Not sure if I pronounced this right, Mr. Ahola, so forgive me if I did not. <laughs> so he also played Kauko in Vikings in 2013 season. And uh, that's another one of my favorite shows. I dearly love it. So, so Odo is a big guy, or was a big guy, but is it really possible to get shot by a bolt that big, right through your throat and neck, and not only survive, but also be able to fight like nothing has happened? I had my doubts. See, see, the neck is a very vulnerable part of the human body. Actually, it connects your head to your body. So the heart is here and the brain is here, and they need to be in constant exchange of air and blood. So, so like pretty much everything that goes through here is vital. So there's arteries, there's veins, there's the trachea, um, there is the vertebrae, you know. So it, you, just, you just destroy one of these vital elements and you're instantly dead, <laughs> for sure. So I thought this part of the movie is in fact very epic, but also completely unrealistic. Well, but hey, I mean, it's fiction, so who cares? Still, still, it gave me a bad feeling. But then yesterday, my wife, who is a medical doctor, discovered something really interesting in this magazine, Ärzteblatt, that every German doctor gets like once a month or even twice a month, I don't know. She found a really interesting article that is highly relevant here and that we will talk about today. So let me tell the story behind this in a somewhat less scientific way. Once upon a time, there was a guy in Germany who equally was in love with crossbows and drinks. <laughs> he probably played with his crossbow, you know, maybe in front of the TV watching Kingdom of Heaven, who knows, and drinking and playing and, you know, being just a happy guy. But in any case, at some point, he managed to cock the crossbow and load it and play with it so that he turned it around and shot himself right through the throat and neck. <laughs> it's a miracle to me how he managed that, but the doctor said it was probably not a, a suicide attempt, so just an accident. That must have been the mother of all oh, shucks moments. <laughs> but he actually managed to call the ambulance and then he waited and they brought him to the hospitals and the good doctors in the Tübingen University Hospital actually found that he was breathing fine, he was conscious, he was not really bleeding very much and um, yeah and then circulation worked fine so blood pressure everything was okay. So they decided to make a CT scan because for obvious reasons they couldn't do an MRI since there was a bolt with metallic parts still stuck in his throat. And here is the model that they constructed based on the CT scan. It is very scary for sure, don't you think? <laughs> was it really possible that the guy was lucky enough so the bolt simply missed all vital parts? No. Turns out the bolt first nicked the vein, then damaged the thyroid and hit the common carotid artery. It went right through this super important artery, hit vertebra number seven, and even broke off part of it. Luckily, he did not hit the vertebral artery. So, so how did he survive a penetrated artery in his neck? <laughs> well, th this is an artery that is under a lot of pressure. So he was lucky enough to pierce it all the way, right in the middle. If he would just have nicked it, 
That would not have worked. It, the blood would have sprayed out and it would ha have killed him in no time. And the same would have happened if he would have decided to pull out the bolt because that's like, you know, popping the cork from a champagne bottle. The, the blood would have sprayed out in a high arc and he would be dead within seconds or minutes. But this way he survived and without any major physical discomfort. <laughs> and then of course he had to undergo surgery and the good doctors patched the carotid artery uh, with bovine pericardium. So that's a part from a cow's heart, <laughs> which is the common way how to repair these damages anyway. So um, the guy survived. Now this of course would not have been possible for Odo, our German friend from the movie, because way back then in medieval times there was no advanced surgery. So he would have died eventually. But, but is it possible that he could have survived long enough to just fight and effectively fight? Yes, absolutely, that is possible. Hard to believe, right? What do we learn from this? Well, first, alcoholic drinks and weapons don't mix very, very well, so don't do it. <laughs> Second, if you play with your crossbow, don't load it. <laughs> if you must load it anyway, don't use hunting broadheads. And we'll come to that later again, explain why you shouldn't use hunting broadheads when you play with your crossbow. Third, if you hit yourself or somebody else, <laughs> then don't pull out the arrow or bolt. Leave it in there, don't move, call the ambulance and wait. Okay, now a little experiment to prove my point. So here are two bottles of water, just tap water. We drank the real stuff. <laughs> and we will now shoot arrows into it, different arrows, with the world's tiniest legic crossbow that I made myself. It actually holds five different arrows. And first we will just load it with a regular arrow with the field tip. Okay, put it in here. Okay, there it is. And then we load it. And then we load a broadhead. Hunting broadhead, very deadly, very sharp. Okay, all right. So now we got two bolts in here, and the first bolt is a field tip. And we will shoot it into the, into the bottle and see what happens. Okay, let's cock it. Right. Take careful aim and shoot. Bing. All right. So here is the, the arrow. And as you see, not much is coming out. But watch what happens when I pull it out. Now I simulate the blood pressure a little bit. <laughs> that is what happens. It plugs it. You can plug it again to show you how that works. Okay, one side, the other side. And you see, if I now press on it, there's far less water coming out. It just plugs the holes in here, effectively. And the same would have happened to our artery and, and also to the veins. Okay. And now we will try again with the broadhead. Okay, take careful aim again. Bing. First of all, you see, it was far, far more effective. It went all the way through. And then also, now look what happens now. <laughs> see? This is blood loss, guys. This is blood loss. <laughs> so, a field tip arrow managed to not cause all this kind of deadly injuries, but a broadhead would have, first of all, really damaged the thyroid, and then it would have probably cut through the vein, and then actually separated the uh, artery into two halves, and that would have instantly killed the guy. So the hunting broadhead is far more dangerous. In case you want to play with your crossbows, you know, don't use this. Use this for hunting only, or for self-defense, I don't know. Okay, then let me also show you the effect on this rubber band, which is about the same diameter as the uh, carotid uh, artery is. So this is a little bit under pressure to simulate the blood pressure. Like I said, the artery is uh, under a lot of pressure. Now first, let's take our normal tip here. Okay, put this down. Let's take our normal tip and pierce it. Okay, we pierce this thing, it's just a rubber tube. Okay, so as you see, this stucks in here, 
and it actually effectively plugs it, right? But this thing is not tearing. It's just it's just reclosing again, even after I put it out. Now I do the same with the road head. Okay, pierce it carefully here, and now go all the way through. Ding! <laughs> it immediately snapped, and this is exactly what would have happened if you would have used a hunting broadhead versus a field tip arrow. You cannot really overemphasize the deadliness that arrows like this add to even really weak crossbows like this little pistol one. I think you can kill someone with this, even though it is fairly weak and rubber powered. Now if you take a closer look at the movie, we see that Odo was actually hit by a somewhat, you know, not by a hunting broadhead. It looks like it's probably a botkin tip or something. But yes, that arrow would have worked like a plug, just like the one in the guy in the German hospital. So yeah, absolutely. It is possible that he would have been alive after the hit and been able to competently fight for at least a few more minutes. My respects go out to Ridley Scott whose movie Kingdom of Heaven now to me is even better than it was before. And I hope you like that movie too. You should rewatch it if you haven't done this already a few times. <laughs> because that's it for today. Thanks and bye bye.